All right, in this tips and tricks session, I want to talk about how to optimize frame server. You know, we briefly touched on that in the preferences and the frame server settings are really a way to optimize the amount of performance you're getting out of your personal machine. You know, it, it basically allows Nuke to spin up multiple instances and really optimize the amount of processor power and RAM per instance to use as much of your system resources as you can. So what we're going to do first is we're going to look at our main settings. So right now for threads and processes, I have it set to the Nuke default, which is eight processes and set to limit renderer. And you can see when you hover over it, it tells you exactly what's going on. So it's using two threads and 25% of your RAM. So we'll hit OK. And you'll see I've set up just a little checkerboard with an animated transform with some motion blur turned on. Nothing too heavy, but it'll give us a sense of how fast we're rendering and what our utilization looks like. So to render it, we'll either double click on our right node and click the render button, or we can go up to render and hit render all right nodes or selected right nodes. So in this case, I'll click render. I want to use our global settings, which I've already set up as 1 to 100. And then we want to render using the frame server. So once we've ticked that box, we hit OK. You can see it moves us over to our background render tab. And if you scroll over, you'll see that our progress has started and now we're moving. If we click over to our task manager, we can see that our processor utilization has jumped up to about 50%, which sounds about right for a, a 16 core machine. You can see our memory usage, we're having pretty stable memory usage at 18, 19%. And you can see we're about 30% done. You know, if we're doing this for real, we really want to use as much of our machine as physically possible. So in this case, we're going to try and noodle our settings up to get, you know, as much as we physically can. All right, that's done. That took X many minutes. Now let's noodle our settings. So now we'll go back to our settings. Now say with this particular machine, I have 16, 16 cores and with limited render, it's using two threads per, core, per process. So really I could go to 15, hit okay. We'll, oops, we'll save our script, which it should have been saved already. And put this in our temp folder. All right, and then once we've made our settings, frame server, you have to restart as indicated in the preferences. So we'll hit OK, double check it, close it, save. Once it's closed down, we'll open Nuke back up. All right, so now we're back in the script. The settings have been changed and we've restarted for them to take effect. So we'll go back to render now, render, global, using frame server, we'll hit go. We can pan over here and see our time. We'll go back to our task manager. So now you can see we're actually hitting a full 100% of our utilization. Our memory hasn't changed much, but this is a very light, you know, this is a very light process in terms of memory, so it's not something we have to worry about too much. When you get into something that's really memory heavy, so say each process is using 10 gigs of memory, you're really only gonna be able to run six processes before you've run out of RAM. And once you run out of RAM, your rendering fails. And that's you know not a good, not a good thing. But as you can see, we are definitely getting better performance and more frames out the door faster just by making that one simple change. All right, and we're done. So now we'll go back into our threads processes and I'm gonna change it to custom. So now I can be very explicit in that I want, let's say I want 31 processes to run and I want one thread per process. So with my machine, I have 32 threads total. So this will leave me one thread to do other things. And then I have 64 gigs of RAM. If I want to divide it evenly or I want to use a percentage of that, I'll figure out what that math is and then punch that in. So in this case, if I have 64 gigs and I'm running 
31 processes. I think I'll go two gigs of RAM per. And that'll basically use all of my, divide all of my RAM evenly across all of those processes. So we'll hit okay, we'll save, we'll see you after the restart. All right, so we've made the changes to the frame server settings and now we've restarted once again. So now let's go to render, global, use frame server settings. As you can see, it spins off again. Go back to our task manager. We'll see, we're actually getting 94% utilization. And you can see that that's utilizing across almost all of the cores. Something else to be aware of with some specific processors and some of these thread rippers, the way their memory bandwidth works is they're passing through the cores. Two of the cores are main and two of the cores are piggybacked. So there are some particular instances where really tuning these settings might optimize the way your processor works and really give you output considerably faster than just using some of the default settings. And this is an interesting one because you can see that even though I should be within my, you know, within the cap of my processors, this particular setup isn't rendering faster than the previous one. And that's why, you know, sometimes setting it up to where it's theoretically the best isn't necessarily the actual, you know, real life performance best way to do it. And here you can see all the nuke instances that are actually spun up. So now it's, it's showing one instance per each of the frame servers. All right, and we're done. So as you can see by the times displayed, there's really, you know, it varies wildly how good the performance is from the rendering standpoint based on the settings of your frame server preferences.